we've seen climate change hysteria take its grip on our country over the past few years. Everything from pouring soup on Van Gogh's sunflowers to Black Lives Matter blocking airport runways because climate change is also apparently racist. I don't even get me started. Whilst many would dismiss these instances as a few loud-mouthed eccentrics amidst an otherwise reasonable and well-intentioned agenda. It's impossible to deny that it's also backed by our institutions. Well, Leeds University have just released research recommending Second World War-style rationing <laughs> of petrol, household energy and meat to combat climate change. So whilst your grandparents may have done their bit by donating scrap metal, working in munitions factories or indeed going off to fight, we've now just all become lycra-clad bike-riding vegetarians for the greater good. Uh, kind of researchers at least concede this was uh, the unpalatable option. Ken Livingston, David Starkey are here with me. Ken this can all be traced back to you starting the congestion charge. <laughs> it's all your fault, isn't it? Can you believe how far we've come? Well, look, the, the, when I brought in the congestion charge, before then, central London was gridlocked. People were just stuck in their cars. It is now! Have you ever been in, in central car? London no, no, recently? It's, it's gridlocked 12, now. There's 12% less cars came into London. Pollution went down 12%. And, but what we got to say to people, look, You've got to get out of cars, use public transport, because the pollution you're producing, the damage you do to the environment, is devastating. I'm so, I, I just, I'm so tired of having this conversation, but it's such an important conversation to have, I think, mm. in that that's a lovely idea in a sort of utopian ideal mm. if London was just a village where everybody <laughs> tottered around and it was always 25 degrees outside. But on a dark, rainy, cold night when you've got to be ferrying children mm. around and what do you want people to do under those circumstances well in all my life i've never driven a car i've just always used public transport or walked and that's very good for your health actually i mean doesn't look it can i say <laughs> you're not exactly a shining example of robust health i'm a year older than you and i look a damn sight better <laughs> and i sit and i sit in the car whenever i can i also understand there's a purpose for cities Cities are about connectivity. Mm. The reason you live in a city is because you want to be able to get around. Cities, it's a fundamental of civilization. Mm. It's the fundamental of capitalism. It's the reason Ken and I were discussing before but we came... It's better in... to sit on the bus and have a chat to someone else. No, it's not. not I mean, it depends, it depends whether you have anything... Let me, just let me finish. It's really important. It depends whether you have anything serious to do. Cities are the foundation of civilization. Mm. And what people like Ken are doing with... For the moment, I will concede good motives. They are deliberately killing our economy. Well, Wherever you look, look, it is being our deliberately is killing the planet. Literally, who cares? We've got to change the no, way. No, this is nonsense. Live. Or by the middle of this, I mean, ten years ago, I feared by the end of this century we could face extinction. And climate change. But we have this now, is rubbish. Now this is rubbish. No, sorry. Century. You were you're a look believer in violent weather all over the world. Oh, for and heaven's sake! Look, 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 look here in Britain. There was snow on the ground every winter in London when I was a kid. Mm. I was in about three days so far this year, and every summer now is hotter than we've ever had before. Last it? summer, on that hottest day. 2,000 Londoners died from the heat. But you must know that we are, we are, what we've experienced, what we have measured, is a tiny period. When, I mean, again, Ken's memory, is so sh Ken's memory is so short. <laughs> uh, back in the 1970s, the great panic was we were going to have a new ice age. Mm. Human beings can cope perfectly easily with increased temperatures. An ice age would be completely catastrophic. And you can put forward a very good argument that the only reason we've not had another ice age, because we had one until the 1940s, and um, we had another one in the late 19th century, we had a terrible one mm. in the 16th and 17th centuries is industrialization. The great problem with Ken's position, listen to what he says, we've got an emergency, it's panic, it's terror. What he's trying to do is exactly what these fools in the University of Leeds are trying to do. They're trying to panic us. Human beings have coped with everything that's been it's thrown at them, providing you've not had false It's not panic. about panic. I've got five kids. I don't want them to die in their middle life. Of course life. you don't. And the, Nor the do I. Weather, every week I now on the news, there's a massive violent weather event somewhere in the world. That's much, much worse than but when you and I were growing up. So, but again, this isn't, it, hang on, isn't it the arrogance of man to think that we can do much about that in our, in our lifetime, though? We can. We just need to consume less. We need to... Wait were you less. saying you all want us to be poor? socialising with each other. You want us we to be poor. We grew up in that post-war world. 
you spend most of your time socialising with friends, neighbours, mm. workmates. Now, people are just much more isolated, they're consuming. But that's because of so much of the eco-zealotry is encouraging us to live these smaller lives. We talked about the calling yeah. for rations. Eat but Bev... Consumless. Sit in your house. Bev, Bev, I grew... We are... Ken and I are roughly the same age. Mm. He was clearly content with that boring world of the 1950s, which was narrow. It was, which was, it was narrow, it was mean, there was awful food. I, I spent my life wanting to escape. Mm. He clearly spent his life wanting to suck other people into this awful boredom. But, I am on the side of the future. You belong to a, no, you belong to a pre-modern past. Mm. And so we, why won't you admit it? You would like us to go back to hands huddling in the middle of yes, winter. I need to apologise for your That's bad language, Dr. David Stark. We I know, no, 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 huddle, I said huddling. an animal that spends time collectively with friends, neighbours, and now so many people are living in a tiny little flat, angry, but can't on their you computer. See them? That's because it was That's built by a socialist also, government. People are scared uh. to use public transport. The most, the, the most, because Why the most scared? random acts of violence I've ever seen in my lifetime have been on trains, they've been on buses, you know, and this does affect the poor. It's the people who can't afford to get a taxi back from the pub. Those are the people that are being forced onto public transport. I've used buses and tubes all my life. I've never seen an act of violence once in my well, life. Well, that might be because you're a man. Like, it's different for women. Well, no, it's I'm different pretty weedy, for man. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, and you were mayor of London for quite a long time. You probably got quite a lot of positive attention, possibly, on those transports. I think your and experience... And some abuse. I'm sure you did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but this idea, though, David, of... of, of that we just, I agree we have to consume less, all right? Why? It's too, hang on. It's... Well, it's too easy to go out, to go to these cheap shops, you go to your shops where everything's a quid and you buy a load of plastic tap for the kids and it all ends up in the bin. We can all do better at wasting money on this stuff that is, goes to landfill. I agree with that. But what I don't like is the idea that we have to start rationing our food so in order to save the planet. Because you know who's not rationing the food? The rich, the super rich. But, but can, sorry, this is all getting into the sand and it's getting very silly. The plain truth is that there is no climate emergency. There is no emergency about population. There is no emergency about the amount of goods that are available to what people. What about the no. storm that just hit? Um, sorry, uh, can I? Look, sorry, you've it. talked a lot. Let me well, let me let me just well, finish this. Good. We're in we are in a world in which we are able to generate excess. Right back to the early 19th century, there was this notion uh, that was paddled, uh, peddled by Malthus that the, the population of the world would exceed its resources. That notion has been demonstrated to be conclusively absolutely wrong. If you, when we, Ken and I were growing up, there were all these myths, which Ken, I'm sure, helped to peddle. There was going to be starvation in India. India has never produced more rice than it does now mm. because of science and because of agriculture. In other words, this attempt at saying we've all got to cut back because there's an emergency, we've got, there's a war on climate change, is complete myth-making. And do you know what? It's people like Ken who wanted to control us. Ken was an extra... I will give Ken one great credit. You were an extraordinary administrator. What you did... Now, this is really important. What you did when you were mayor of London was to create a straitjacket, a corset for London, which is the most ruinous since it had walls in the Middle Ages. It is wholly destructive. It was brilliantly conceived. Its final purpose is catastrophic. And your successor as a current mayor is destroying the economy of London. These people in Leeds will destroy the national and the international economy because rationing has been... Rationing, the sort of thing that you did with the congestion charge has been proved everywhere, above all in the kinds of countries you loved, like the Soviet Union or Cuba, to be an utter right, catastrophe. On, Look, literally, I mean, if we want our children to have a nice oh, this life, is rubbish. we've got to stop the... I mean, you look all around the world, there are more and more violent weather events all the time. I mean, you look here in Britain... The number of people L dying in them is no, no, tiny. No, no, no. Listen, tiny. you look back, we used to have snow on the ground every winter. When You've we said that kids. once. And now you've hardly seen any... For, 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 you've said it twice. About three days. And three times. Every summer is hotter than before. And it's now hotter, hot enough... Hotter in the last... since the 19th century. No, no, it's hotter now, year by year by year. And last summer, since on that when? hottest day... 
2,000 Brits died from the heat. People die We've anyway. We've got to tackle it. Well, no. so, but I'm, I'm sort of fascinated by this idea that if we want our children to have a good future... Mm. Right now, I'm worried about my children. Yeah. And, and yes, of course, I cast a thought to one day having grandchildren, but I want my children to be able to uh, use a car and I can t take them in the car for safety reasons. I like the locks on my door. I don't want to be walking around the streets and no. getting the buses and tubes, which are expensive and dirty and overcrowded well, and horrible. What makes your kids' life good is the time they spend with friends and so on. And that's, that's the world that's sort of almost been eroded. I mean, we grew up in a world where you spent so much time with friends and neighbours. Now, very often, people are just stuck at home. You said that before already, but Ken. So it's the really... true. But you can connect, though, the, the drive for a smaller life Rationing of food, rationing of travel. Yep, we need to do Can all you that. connect that, though, with the fact that that keeps people apart? No, no, it doesn't keep people apart. Plan so we spend more time with each other. And it literally, if I look back, we grew up in a world where we were part of community. Now there's so many people living alone and in a little And throttling and throttling and me. You were talking about gay liberation. Gay liberation was liberation from exactly that community of the 1950s that you're talking about. Mm. The other thing that Ken has forgotten to say, as we discuss in coming in, was people of our parents' generation died in their 50s and 60s. Mm. The reason they live now is modern medicine. Modern medicine depends and on... And good diets. Dep but diet. it depends on, above all, on economic progress. And he wants to kill it... I want to see it triumph. And do you know what? I want to see all those people in the third world able to share what we have. Yep, Ken's recipe is designed to make us as poor as they are. Do.